Hello students, today I am going to talk about the next probable means topic for 2022 that is whistleblower. There has been one question asked previously also on the whistleblower after 2014 act on the whistleblower. So today what we are going to do, we are going to understand that what is whistleblower and what is whistleblowing and why to blow the whistle and what are the acts and the arrangements for the protection of whistleblower we have. Then we will see that what are the features in the act and what is the lacuna in that. And then we will compare it with the best model in the world that is the USA model. These are the things which we are going to cover in this video. So now the very first thing which we are going to discuss here is why to protect the whistleblower. For that you need to understand or you need to go in the background of RTI. So we all know that the RTI was enacted to have the atmosphere of transparency in the system. And whenever I am talking about the RTI, how I can forward to recall the second ARC in my examination? Because the second ARC about ARC says that RTI depends on the different pillars. The first is participation, second is transparency, third is accountability and the fourth is predictability. So this is the pillars on which RTI depends and we all know that with the help of RTI there are many RTI activists that have revealed the information. But the question arises that why the people will reveal the information whenever there is a threat to their life. And in this context, we will have to see the importance of protection of the whistleblower. So why I am using the word whistleblower? So the very first thing you need to understand that who are these people? So basically, these people are who blows the whistle whenever there is any illegal activities or any unethical activities going on in the organization, whether it is public organization or it is a private organization. Recently, uh, recently Vice President Venkaya Naidu has asked the corporates to create the culture of whistleblowing in the organization. So it gives us an understanding that whistleblower is not only about the public organization, it is also about the private organization. Now why to protect them? There is a need to protect them if you want to strengthen the pillars of the RTI because if we will not protect them, then why they will come in the public and will reveal the information whenever they know that there is a threat to their life. Clear? Now the second thing we need to understand that there may be or if you are aware about the Satendra Dubey incident, Satendra Dubey incident, he was an officer in NHAI and he was murdered and from here the idea of whistleblower protection came in India. Actually what has happened? After his murder, there was a petition in the court and the court has asked the government to give information or to take action with respect to this murder. And the government has released the resolution that is public interest disclosure and prevention of informer resolution. So the government has brought this resolution after that, second ARC have also suggested to have the whistleblower act. So, in 2011, we thought of having the whistleblower act. And lastly, I will say, in 2014, this act has been passed and whatever the act we have today is the whistleblower act 2014. So this is the background of the whistleblower. Now here 
you can see that the types of whistle blower there may be external whistle blower or there may be internal whistle blower external means if the person is not working within the organization even after this if he has or she has any information with respect to unethical practices he or she can blow the whistle and internal simply means that the person who is already working within the organization so this is the background of the whistle blower protection and the whistle blower act in india so now as you can see that i wrote here 2014 act and 2015 bill so now what what point i am trying to make here first i will talk about the features of 2014 act and then i will discuss that how the features in 2014 act has been diluted to the bill of 2015 basically what government is required to do that they should strengthen the whistle blower act but what they are doing that they are crippling the provisions of 2014 whistle blower act so now here understand that what are the feature the very first feature that whenever you want to complain about any individual with respect to his illegal practices then where you will report it for that there is a competent authority so now you will say sir who is this competent authority it depends upon the person involved in the illegal practice for example if the union minister is involved in any illegal practices and you want to blow the whistle against him you will go to prime minister so for him the competent authority is prime minister maybe for a person working in any public organization and he is a group a group b group c officer then the competent authority is cvc if i am working in any organization then my competent authority may be my boss so basically competent authority varies from organization to organization but ultimately in the matter of corruption the final competent authority is cvc second you cannot make a anonymous complaint it means that if you are going to the competent authority then you will have to reveal your identity it is not that in an envelope in a sealed envelope you are just putting the name of the person engaged in the illegal activity and sending or posting it to the competent authority no the third is if you are giving false or frivolous information then there is a penalty of 2 years or 30000 rupees and if someone is revealing the identity of the whistle blower then this punishment is of 3 year or 50000 rupees the next thing is in this particular act it is written it is written that we will have to protect the victimization of the whistle blower but the problem with this act is the scope of the victimization has not been clearly led in the act so it becomes wide or whenever it becomes wide it lost its clear meaning this is the problem so now we will see what is happening in 2000 15 bill but before talking about 2015 and to make it more precise and easy for you to understand i just want to tell one thing that as per 2014 act whistle blower can reveal the information even that information which is prohibited in official secret act 1923 clear now understand what is the difference the very first difference is the very first difference is whatever is prohibited under official secret act now if the bill gets passed then whistle blower then whistle blower cannot disclose the information 
which is prohibited under official secret act first thing the second thing is now if the whistle blower wants to blow the whistle with respect to the corruption or any abuse of power in the public organization then they cannot do if the information falls under 10 different categories 10 different categories so now you will say sir ye 10 different category yaad karne padenge nahi this for the information i am telling you few categories for example if the information is related to ipr if the information is related to electronic means if the information is related to unity sovereignty of the country if the information is related to privacy then you cannot reveal the information even if it is leading to corruption or abuse of power so basically what is happening these two clauses which is in this bill is diluting 2014 act clear this is the act and arrangements for the visual protection we have so now we will see that what are the different challenges or lacuna in the act the very first thing is retaliation whenever a person whenever a person is revealing any information then he is being considered as a traitor for example Snowden for example Julian Assange so they are being considered that they have done unethical act against the organization where they are working so basically retaliation what is happening here that the organization is giving them leave without pay or sending them on leave or suspending them this is the issue with respect to the whistleblower that what is happening that it is talking about protection of victimization but what is happening is victimization of the whistleblower the second is anonymity so whenever you can whenever you will have to reveal the identity then the problem arises because what is happening that a person is always in the pressure is always in the fear that even that the competent authority knows him and if if for just for an example if the competent authority has a very close relation with the person against whom you have filed a complaint then what will happen so anonymity must be there third one is cvc the problem here is whenever you are going to the competent authority that is cvc cvc cannot take action against them CVC, based on the report, will ask to the departmental head for departmental inquiry. So, again it will be revealed. Again it will be revealed. And in most of the cases, the competent authority is senior, your boss. Then, so basically, if you know, if you want to reveal the information against your boss and your competent authority is boss, then what you will do? So, this is the problem penalty if you will see even in the ages of Kautelya I will say Kautelya has suggested in his Arth Shastra that whosoever reveals the corruption then he will get one by sixth of the amount involved in the corruption but what is happening here you are doing contrary to the ideas of the Arth Shastra and you are doing contrary to the best principles that is required for the whistleblower protection that you should give reward to the whistleblower but sadly or unfortunately sometimes it happens that if false information comes to the person then you are asking for the penalty then basically what you are doing you are preventing him you are preventing him for furnishing the information so this is the lacuna in the now best model in this world best model i told you that is usa so in USA, there is no any concept of anonymity. There is no any concept of anonymity. No. Second, they have the idea of giving reward to the visual blower. Then third one is that there is an independent arbitrator who is investigating the complaint. Here there is a competent authority. There is an independent arbitrator. 
so this is the best model in this world now the question arises that what should be done what should be done so here i am just telling you the suggestion suggestion means suggestion simply means that in the hindu newspaper 3 days back it was reported that a state should take a lead a state should take a lead how they can take the lead first they should fast in the investigation cases in the case of harassment of whistle blower investigation should be fast second is the best way that can help the whistle blower is reveal the information firstly once you will reveal the information then what is the need of the whistle blower the best thing is to use section 4 of rti that talks about the suo moto disclosure suo moto disclosure that is the example is jan suchna portal of rajasthan first reveal the information all the information reveal in the public domain then all the problem with respect to the threats to the life of the whistle blower will end so this is the best thing i will suggest then reward you must give reward to the whistle blower then you must take a step so that the organization should not take any retaliatory action against them any retaliation against them for example the department should not suspend them till the investigation is going on the department should not transfer him to another department till the investigation is going on this should be done so this is the whole idea of the whistle blower and if any question comes on the whistle blower then i find now that it will be easy for you to write any answer on this question so that's all about the whistle blower in next video i will again come with another probable means topic for 2022 thanks to all of you